We got breaking news out of the NFL where the Los Angeles Chargers are trading Keenan Allen to the Chicago Bears. This has been confirmed by our Jonathan Jones. LA will receive a fourth round pick in exchange for the six time Pro Bowler. Allen leaves Los Angeles as the Chargers second leading receiver in all major categories, trailing only Antonio Gates. The Bears, meanwhile, add a weapon for whoever will be under center next season, whether it be Caleb Williams or Justin Fields. It's another offensive weapon for Chicago. Let's dive in instant reaction with two of our finest minds, Bryant McFadden, Emery Hunt. It is great to see you and it's great to have more NFL news coming down the pipe. Uh, Emery, I'm going to go to you first here. Your initial reaction when you see this deal for, yes, a veteran wide receiver, but another piece for whoever's going to be playing quarterback next season in Chicago. It gives them something that they don't have currently, and that's a big dog at wide receiver guy that's, that can go up top, one above the rim, that can be a stretch vertical threat as well. So now you have a situation where you're opening up the field for a co-commit or whoever that third receiver is going to be. We still have a draft coming up. So I like that they went ahead and got someone that's a bigger target, but we know Keenan Allen is so versatile that he can play any one of the three receiver spots. So I like the move because of the height and his skill set gives him some versatility at the receiver position. Mac, I'm, I'm sitting here looking at it, and you know well where my allegiances lie, but in trying to parse what the Bears will be next season, if they are going to have a rookie quarterback in Caleb Williams at number one, can you remember a better situation that a rookie's inheriting? When you look at that offensive weaponry, DJ Moore, now Keenan Allen, DeAndre Swift standing next to him, Khalil Herbert offering depth there. Cole Komet has emerged as one of the better tight ends in the league. Like This situation is very unique when we're talking about a rookie quarterback. Yeah, when you talk about a rookie quarterback, remember when Pat Mahomes became the starting, the starter in Kansas City, he had an opportunity to sit and kind of learn from Alex Smith, you know what I mean? Of course, he walked into a great room as well, offensive production, uh, productive players surrounding him. But yeah, this might be the best situation for a rookie quarterback, if that's what Chicago is going to do with a guy like Caleb Williams, because when you walk into that locker room, when you get into that offensive huddle, you have so much of experience to work within. DJ Moore, who is a do-it-all type of wide receiver. He's a football player that happens to play the wide receiver. Kenny Moore, one of the best route runners still to this day in the National Football League, a sure-handed catch guy, not to mention a big-time playmaker. And, oh, by the way, he can move the chains. Cole Komet, a red zone nightmare for any defender trying to guard him in the red zone. Gerald Everett, oh, he's a guy who just does things the right way, under the radar, but yet and still a guy who's had a real pretty good career in the National Football League. DeAndre Swift, I mean, my goodness, whoever the quarterback is, young or old, they're walking into a lot of pressure. Because if you're a Chicago Bears fan, you don't want to hear, oh, we got to wait. No, you want to win now. The timing is now. Ryan Pose has done a phenomenal job in stockpiling talent. There's no issue when it comes to talent right now in Chicago. And you have the draft to work from also. You have the first overall selection, and you are sitting at nine. So if you want to stay put at nine, you're going to get a difference maker. If you want to move back to, you know, add more, more picks to the draft, you have the luxury of doing so as well. So I don't know if there's another team that has had a better offseason than the Chicago Bears. And like I said, they still have the draft in April to improve even much more when you look at what they've already done. Emory, I want to get to Emory, those picks and the strategy moving forward. Forward, but first, let's go off on Ryan Poles here because Bears Twitter, it can be a toxic place at time. And he's been panned for certain things, rightfully so. The Chase Claypool deal comes to mind. But what he's done this offseason seems notable and it seems like there's vision behind it. How do you grade out the offseason for the young general manager and Ryan Poles? I feel like his offseason started during the season when he picked up Montez Sweat. So when you include that, you got to give them an A+. Plus. Because you got a game breaker at running back. Anytime you get a running back paired with a mobile quarterback, they're going to have a, a, an advantageous box. Or they're going to have great yards per carry average. But when you have a great quarterback that can run paired with a great running back that's elusive, the sky, sky's the limit for DeAndre Swift. Then I forgot, B Mac talked about it. Gerald Everett is a fantastic receiving mm -hmm. option to go with Cole Komet. And then you look at what they've done defensively, shoring up some guys, and what they did last year, bringing Tremaine, uh, Tremaine Edmonds uh, from the defense side of the ball at linebacker. So, yeah, he's done a fantastic job starting with Montez Sweat and moving all the way through to what we're seeing now. And he still is sitting in the catbird seat with two top 10 picks 
that he can do whatever he wants to uh, and he could wheel the deal and get more picks and more players. So he's sitting pretty right now and it's looking real nice for Chicago. I mean, Odunze neighbors there at nine, and that's a three-headed monster at wide receiver. And as you said it, Shane Waldron, the new OC, loves a little bit of too tight with their Everett. Also more in line and a pass-catching tight end. He shares up uh, the franchise cornerback and gives him the deal he deserves. He gets something at safety and Kevin Byard and seeing if he can uh, reignite his career in the back end. It's been active for Ryan Poles to say the very least. Let's go on the other side of this deal because the Chargers being built in the image of their new head coach, but it's more of a tear down before the build right now. Uh, Mike Williams cut Keenan Allen traded Mack and Bosa. They end up restructuring Eckler gone. What does it look like moving forward, Mac, when you look at the Los Angeles Chargers this coming season? This is a rebuild for the Los Angeles Chargers. When you talk about losing so many key significant players on the offensive side of things, and you expect to be relevant uh, in the same division when you're going against the Kansas City Chiefs twice a year, good luck. Good luck. Now, luckily, you talked about retaining Bosa and Mac, but outside of that, what do they have? You know, I, I really, you know, enjoy watching the job that we're seeing with Chicago because they're adding talent. For the Chargers, they're losing talent. You're, you're two starting wide receivers. Yes, Mike Williams has been, you know, dealing with the injuries throughout his professional career. For the most part, he missed more than half of the year a year ago. Uh, but Keenan Allen, also the same with that hamstring injury, whatever it was. But yet, still, these are key pieces that you had. And then you talk about the featured running back. I mean, they've been a little active throughout free agency. They haven't been as quiet as the Dallas Cowboys, but when you talk about losing so many key contributors and not really being super aggressive during free agency, you still have the draft to work with. But I think this is going to be a re rebuild year for Coach Harbaugh and the Chargers. Emery, a thought on Los Angeles from your side here, because a rebuild is one thing, but the clock on Justin Herbert is ticking, not to say we're near any sort of end of a career, but it feels like there's an excuse for a, a year wasted or squandered. And are we, in a way, walking into that same scenario this season? Oh, ye of little faith, guys. Hear me out on this one, right? Um, we know Coach Harbaugh and what he's done everywhere he's been, right? He has turned around the University of San Diego with Josh Johnson, who's quarterback, 40 touchdowns, one pick that senior year. You saw him, what he did at Stanford, led them to a BCS bowl game, top five talent all across the board. We've seen it at San Francisco with Alex Smith. We've seen it at Michigan. I think what we're seeing here is just a reclassification of philosophy. They're going to lean on their run game. I know Gus Edwards is not Bo Jackson, but they still have an opportunity to get better in the backfield. The run game to me is about a mindset. I think as long as you want to run the football, and that's the mindset you're going to be able to run the football. They still have Isaiah Spiller on the roster as well. And also, letting go of these two wide receivers, they own the top five pick. I think their offensive line is solid. They have a lot of good players up front along the offensive line. They recaptured their defensive front, and they're going to build on that side of the ball with depth in the draft. But right now, I think the key is telling you, hey, we took Quentin Johnson last year in the first round. Growing young receiver, we like him. But we also like where we're standing right now at number five with a chance to get another elite talent at wide receiver. So I am not fully abandoning ship of the charge. I think we'll see them take the ball out of Herbert's hands a little bit more, run it a little bit more, play complimentary football and be in a lot of ball games. And they'll be able to close out ball games now better than they did before. So basically, Emory, you're telling us we should get ready to see either the wishbone formation or the wing T formation <laughs> for the Chargers because they're going to be run, run, run because that's the only option based on them not having any wide receivers as we see it today. Uh, well, here's the thing. I mean, every time we saw the fourth quarter in the Chargers last time, uh, you know, before Coach Harbaugh, we saw the interceptions and the bad plays going by, uh, going to, from Justin Herbert going back the other way. So maybe it's best to de-emphasize a little bit just to get them back to neutral. And then, yeah, you could add some more playmakers and then you could open up the offense as you see fit. I, I got to get Ryan Wilson on the phone here and see when Blake Corum's going to be drafted because we know it, it's to L.A., guys. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at the projected offense uh, this season for the Chicago Bears. And this is as it currently stands. Justin Fields, who many believed would be shopped in the early minutes 
of the tampering window is still a Chicago Bear. There are thoughts that it could be a quarterback room with both Fields and Caleb Williams at number one in that room. We will see what they do there, but they have done plenty elsewhere. DeAndre Swift, DJ Moore, Cole Komet, Gerald Everett, and now Keenan Allen. To put into perspective both the greatness of Keenan Allen and the struggle with the forward pass in Chicago, Allen has more than double the career receiving yards of the all-time yards leader Johnny Morris, who played back in the 60s. Maybe the arrow finally pointed up in Chicago.